From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hi, and welcome back to Ropecast. This is Peter Tischer, together with my dear friend, Roger Charlton. Hello, and uh, I suppose I should say welcome back, Peter, because you've been away for a while. Yes, yes, I have. <laughs> I have. Did you have fun with Dan on the oh, other I did, podcast? Yes, yeah. Great, great. Uh, listen, um, I got to be going sometime soon because uh, I want to watch a match uh, of the European Championship. Oh, yes. Football, of course. Yeah. Who do you think will win? <laughs> You're asking someone who has a, virtually no interest in football. Well, <laughs> everybody has an interest in football these I'll tell days. you what I'm going to say. France have the home advantage. Let's say France. Uh-huh. Okay. And what about, well, your home country? Which one do you want? Ah, <laughs> that's a difficult question, I know. Well, there are three teams from the British Isles who have entered yeah. the championship, right? Yeah, poor old Scotland didn't make it this time. Yeah, yeah, too bad. But Wales won their first match, the opening match, I think the first match they ever played. In this kind of championship, certainly. Yeah, which is maybe part of the problem of teams from the British Isles not winning everything. Well, we're spreading, anything. Our, spreading our talent among four different teams, you mean? Yeah, right. You have, well, right now we have uh, Wales, we have England, we have Ireland. Well, Northern Ireland, we should say here. Uh, right. And we have the Republic of Ireland, too. Yeah, but we? we're talking about the UK. Yeah, so. okay. But three teams from the UK, which yeah. is a problem. Why is that so? I mean, Germany doesn't have... <laughs> Uh, I don't know, Saarland as a separate team, <laughs> although they did once. Well, the Saarland was a separate entity, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, at the time that was a separate country, so yeah. that was logical that they had their own national team. But Great Britain is, well, still, I might say, one country. Yes. <laughs> so why do you have several different so-called national teams for one nation? I think it's a historical accident, actually, because um, uh, in the 19th century... There were so many different sets of rules for the game that we now call soccer or association football, it's often called in the UK. And it was not until quite late in the 19th century that people began to think we ought to agree on one set of rules. It's stupid to have all of these different rule books. Okay. And so um, this thing called the Football Association was founded in England, in London. Which is still actually the English Association, it is, yes. right? Yeah. And which, after which the FA Cup is named. Exactly. That is played yeah. throughout the Great Britain. That's right, yes. Uh -huh. So this was, um, the FA was founded in uh, 1863. Okay. Um, they say it's the oldest in the world. I haven't checked that, but it could be true. And Scotland followed only a few years later, about 10 years later. So that's the second oldest in the world. <laughs> And uh, things went on from there. There was nobody else around. You know, Germany oh. Germany scarcely existed at that time. Right, true enough. Just, just being unified. And, and I think Wales also founded uh, their association. They did. But, uh, yeah, that was uh, even later than Scotland. So uh -huh. that, that, that's the order. Uh -huh. Okay. And Ireland is different because at the time we're talking about the 19th century, the whole of Ireland was part of the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, right. became divided later on. So originally, there was just um, one uh, association for Ireland. And then when Ireland got politically divided, uh, they also had to split into two different uh, football associations. And so FIFA agreed that these very, very old associations were allowed to compete independently. Is that the that reason? That seems to have been the case right from, right from day one. Uh-huh. But on the other hand, aren't there any discussions about joining forces to have better chances at no. winning? No. Can you see the Scots joining the English? Uh, well, you, you tell me. <laughs> you know, they had a referendum not very long ago. And although they voted to stay in the, the United Kingdom, mm -hmm. it was not a big majority. So I would not expect okay. that to happen, to be honest. That, that makes sense. But... One thing that I find interesting, did you know that there actually once was a United Kingdom national football team? For the Olympics? Yep, for the last London Olympics. Not only, though, there was even one earlier than that. 
there was uh, there were games played for example in 1947 in Hampton Park Glasgow Great Britain as yeah. it was called at the time played against the rest of Europe oh. <laughs> cool that's, isn't it that's new to me yeah they won 6 to 1 by the way it's mm. supposed to have been called the match of the century <laughs> so and all of this discussion apparently led to something because I did some research on this I was curious to something that is extremely amazing, uh, a Wikipedia entry for something that does not exist. <laughs> you know, it, it reads, first sentence from the Wikipedia reads, no United Kingdom national football team currently exists. <laughs> that's that's just kind of funny. And you have the top scorer scored two goals probably from that match. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> so that's kind of funny. Yeah. Northern Ireland is amazing because the whole population of Northern Ireland is about one and a half million. Mm -hmm. And you take out the children, and then uh, you think not everyone is interested in soccer. Mm -hmm. Then to actually get their team mm -hmm. into this level of soccer is pretty good going. Well, uh, Iceland played against Portugal, oh, yes. uh, one goal each. So mm -hmm. apparently, even if you're a small country, you can, well, at least not lose a match here and there. <laughs> and sometimes even win, just as England did in 1966. Yeah. The, uh, the, the other thing that is interesting, perhaps, for listeners is the situation in Wales, because I think if you check Wikipedia, it will tell you that rugby is the national sport of Wales, mm -hmm. not soccer. Okay. Yet in terms of the numbers of people playing and the numbers of people watching, soccer wins, hands down. Mm -hmm. Of course. And I think there are various reasons for that. Like, rugby in Wales is... It's not regarded as a very modern sort of game, not like soccer with its very international image and appeal mm -hmm. to everybody, women as well as men. There are good women's soccer teams mm -hmm. as well as men's. And I think uh, there's also the thing in Wales, there's a big difference between the north of Wales and the south of Wales. North of Wales, people go and watch Liverpool, Everton, Man United, Man City. Mm -hmm. It's only a short journey from the north of Wales to watch these Mm -hmm. really world-class teams, mm -hmm. and that increases the interest in soccer in the north of Wales mm -hmm. compared with the south where rugby is still pretty strong. Mm -hmm. Okay, but which again uh, lessens their chances of ever winning a championship oh, or yeah. uh, getting into finals, which brings us back to the question that everybody is currently asking themselves at the time of this recording, who do you think will win on the 10th? Well, I, I put my money on France, so what about you? Well, I would like to say it'll be Germany, mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, frankly, I don't know. Oh. I have no idea. But i got to be going anyway. Um, there's a match on at 3, so okay. um, we'll just sign off. Bye-bye, dear listeners. And see you again soon. See you again. Been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.